Hello Collective, welcome back to the Ascended Divination Priestess channel. So I wanted to get back on here and touch a little bit on this law spell thing. Because whoever this masculine is, is going to a practitioner for a law spell. And I don't know if this is a woman you're going to, um, or a man, but I want to guess that this is a man. A, oh, it could be a man. I, I was going to say a woman, but it could be a man you're going to for the law spell. Um... For some reason, I'm being told to tell you. <laughs> I'm being told to tell you that whoever you are paying to do love spells for you are really is really just taking your money. Uh, if someone was genuinely doing their work, the I think you've gone to this person numerous times or a couple of times for a love spell. They will have told you that whoever you are trying to do a law spell on, you probably more than likely already have a contract with. And that is because my previous read that I did, which also mentioned this law spell situation in there, the two of cups came out in there, which means that you two have some type of soul contract. Now, I am not sure why you feel the need to do a love spell on someone uh, because I was pulling on your energy and you showed up as a king of wands. Maybe you are doing love spells because you may have some type of toxic ways about yourself that you are trying to hide and you don't want your twin flame or your soulmate to see that. Um, I also saw the person you're doing the love spell on as like a high priestess. Which means that this, which means that this is someone that will already know of you in some way, shape, or form. If they've ever had an interaction with you, it doesn't have to be sexual. It can just be a face-to-face -face con uh, contact or some type of verbal communications. They will have picked up on your energy and knew that you had some type of. Not that you're, uh, I don't think you're karmic, but uh, they will have picked up on some of your flaws. So someone will have known that you have some demons that you're dealing with. And typically high priestesses that operate in the upright, they're not really there to judge you for those flaws. If you want help with them, with those flaws, they will do the work that they can on their part to help you face those demons. They're not going to help you find an easy way out of it. They're going to help you walk through those demons. Okay. So whoever you are trying to, <laughs> I just feel like now I can't see, I cannot see your face. The person that's requested the love spell, what I can do, I feel your energy. You're, uh, you're like a macho, macho guy. <laughs> Like you, you have to be someone that's very well built, like a very uh, sturdy structure. I don't know how else to put it, but your energy is very heavy. It's really loud. It just it takes up the room. Uh, but there's something I'm also picking up on where, like, when you have met this woman, the high priestess, it's that like you're going to a high priestess to do work on a high priestess. Basically, is what I'm picking up on. But whoever your your soulmate or twin flame is. Um, when you will have met them, you probably came up as someone that, that was well put together, someone very subtle, uh, laid back and chill, but some, but, uh, there's something you're missing about high priestesses is like they see what's beneath the service, not what you're showing them. So yeah, <laughs> they see the truth. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's like I'm seeing like a masculine going through all these hoops and stuff to present himself in some type of light to a woman that already knows what he's about. And I don't even think she's judging you. I think she may have even found you to be kind of sarcastic and kind of funny the, because she knew what you were doing. So you're like beating yourself up about something that she probably already knows. Like I don't want her to know that I have toxic ways. She already knows. I don't want her to know that I like, you know, a lot of women. She already know. I don't want her to know that I have insecurities that I'm dealing with. She already knows. Like, high priestesses, they see things on a deeper level than the average person. So, you're, you've been wasting your money going to a practitioner to do a love spell on your twin flame, basically. There's something where I think you have some type of confession that you need to make, and you are afraid. Yeah, the, the Eight of Swords came out. 
you are afraid of going towards someone communicating with this other high priestess that you're interested in because you're afraid of rejection because the uh, five of cups are also came out in the previous reading which means that you are someone that is afraid of being left out in the cold you may have some type of truth that you need to tell as well to your twin flame soulmate and it has you stuck in your head uh, kind of preventing you from taking actions. There's something like that. There goes the two of cups again. Like this is the truth being illuminated to you. Like you are doing some type of spell on your twin flame. It's not going to work because someone uh, on a spiritual level will have, will, or will already have some type of connection to you. Um, like you have a very beautiful energy about yourself. Um, on a spiritual level, I do think that you're dealing with a lot of demons on the physical, but as far as your energy on the, in the spirit, you're very beautiful. You're a very beautiful person. Um, you have a very, uh, lovely, uh, aesthetic as, uh, as well as what I'm picking up on. Like, I can't see you entirely. Like, I'm seeing, like, parts of you, but you're, you're coming across as a very beautiful man. It's just you have a lot of toxic ways you're dealing with. And instead of hiding those, if you ever come in contact with this person, which it seems that you will, and this has been illuminated to you, you could even be watching this woman and find her to be very beautiful. You definitely have a soul contract with this person, right? Um, if you come in contact with this woman, if you decide to move forward towards her, which I think you will, just be straightforward. Be direct with her because... High priestesses, they don't like to be BS'd around. Empresses don't like to be BS'd around. It's, it's cute that you find this woman to be beautiful and loving and all that. But if you're going to work someone, don't go waste their time. Like, they're going to cut you off in a heartbeat. Maybe you're used to BSing women around and you get away with it. But as far as a high priestess, they don't care about your charm. They don't care about your charisma. They don't care about what's in your pocket. They're not getting married to you because of money. They're not getting with you because you got money in the bank. They don't care about none of that. It is your soul and your essence and the substance of you, of you, who you are. Uh, all together is what they care about. Your character, your morals, your ethics. And yeah, you may not be where you need to be right now. But if you are working on yourself with this Eight of Pentacles showing up, then that's really something that that person would take into consideration and say, yeah, he may not be all, all he needs to be right now. Maybe he still has a lot to deal with, but he's putting in the energy to, in the effort to better himself. So then what the high priestess would do it's kind of try to work with you. They may not get in a relationship with you right away. What they'll do is try to work with you, maybe establish like a friendship with you and see how the friendship goes. Um, but it's not going to be anything that's intimate. It's just going to be, hey, can we be friends or for now and see how that goes. And you shouldn't be there trying to uh, allure her into anything uh, trying to seduce her because maybe you're used to using seduction on other women and it worked. But if you try that on this high priestess, it's going to piss her off and she may end up kind of dropping you like a hot pocket. So you're going to have to approach this situation a little different than you are accustomed to doing. Um, and I think I've been picking up on your energy and didn't realize it for the past few months. You're a kink of like wands, kink of source energy. Uh, you're very like... I don't know. Your energy is very unique, but it's a very beautiful one once you learn how to balance that out. And what I'm also being told is that you're not really someone that needs to go to a practitioner. You're very gifted. You have the gift of discernment yourself. Um, but I think you just don't know how to utilize that or maybe you've been denying that or haven't learned how to perfect it. Like whoever you're going towards to do a spell work for you, you're like more gifted than that person. So it's kind of crazy that you are that powerful and you don't even know how powerful you are. Like you can't, the 10 of, I mean, the, 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 the will of fortune, it doesn't get any better than that. Like you're in control of your own destiny. You may even be like an ascended master, but you're not awakened yet. So you have the authority to make decisions. 
to manifest, to balance things out, to bring attunement um, into different situations in people's lives and yours as well. Um, when it comes to the spiritual ranking and things like that, you have the ability to make judgment in certain situations that other people don't have. Um, but if you notice the difference between you and the people around you, there's something very unique about you and how things play out in your life. And I think that should be something that gives you a key or a clue on how you are separated or distinguished. You may be someone that's accustomed to be surrounded by a lot of karmic people, a lot of toxic people. Uh, and maybe you've been around them your whole life. So you've kind of gotten accustomed. You've adapted to their lifestyle, but that's not really you. On a soul level, and who you're really meant to be is this person, okay? This very genuine, uh, down-to-earth person, someone that's you, uh, someone that's in touch with their inner child, whoever you are supposed to, you know, be with. If it's your twin flame soulmate, you all, you two will meet and will have some type of one-on-one -on -one to discuss things and balance things out. You may be wanting to balance something out with your soul twin. Uh, you may be trying to get away from a queen of pentacles. I don't know if you got in some type of romantic situation with a queen of pentacles. Or maybe she's been trying to get something out of you. You may want to run for the hills. Because there's something about that woman that's just not right. But you and your twin flame, soulmate, higher level soulmate, whatever this is. You two will meet and have a one-on-one, -on -one, have some type of closure. And be able to put this karmic cycle to an end. Because I think there is some type of distance between the two of you. And this this distance, yeah, there's a distance between the two of you. You are absolutely a king of swords energy, king of wands energy. So you're good looking, but your emotional aspect, you haven't put a lot of effort into it. And this is part of the reason why you are out of alignment, out of attunement when it comes to your gifts and things like that. That's why you feel the need to go to a practitioner. It's very it's rhetorical and kind of sarcastic at the same time and a bit ironic that a practitioner is going to another practitioner to do work on their behalf. Like that is, I don't, God, that is so ironic and just, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> it is hilarious. Like when I picked up on this energy, oh my gosh, I said, what in the world? There's one practitioner going to another practitioner to do work on their behalf. Like, and then I, and then I looked into it and I, oh, like he doesn't know, he does not know he's a practitioner. He doesn't know he's gifted, but they're trying to stop you basically from meeting this person, this twin flame of, your, of yours. You see this right here? They're trying to stop you. They're trying to sabotage this union between you and this person. Maybe you don't know. The person you're going to as well, I'm being told, may have gotten paid to cause some type of stack. Oh my gosh, I split the deck and it went right on there. They may have gotten paid to cause some type of stagnation, some type of stalemate between you and your soulmate. So they may have told you some type of lie, uh, told you that person was not your soulmate. That's because she was paid or he was paid behind the scenes. I feel like it could be a, I don't know who it is. It could be a man you went to or it could be a woman. I saw a short, dark-skinned woman in blue or something. I don't know if that's her. Maybe you... I don't know who you went to, but I just know you went to a practitioner for some type of spell work and she was paid to cause some type of still mix, stagnation, mix, confuse you, complicate things. And it's never had to be this complicated. And your twin flame soulmate, this is not even someone that is judgmental in the way that you are thinking. I think what it is is that you met someone and because they were from a different side of the track so you're used to doing a whole lot to have fun i'm just going to put it that way put it that way and then whoever you're supposed to be with is kind of more so on like the proper side of things like they walk that clean path or something like that and nobody is perfect that person probably has their own demons they're dealing with that you don't know about and this is why you shouldn't really be ashamed of your demons because everybody has theirs uh, some people just think like they're better than other people, but that's not the case with this woman that you're going towards. Uh, with the Knight of Cups out here, this means that you are taking the initiative to go towards this person and give them a friendship. But I don't even think someone looks down on you if you are into like maybe drinking, you're into whatever it is you're into, sir. You know, we all have our reasons for why we do things. But I don't think this woman is looking at you like, oh my gosh, this drunk, he's always drinking. Or, oh my gosh, he's a lunatic. No, it's nothing like that. 
Uh, you may even be going towards someone that's exactly like you. They just don't do the things you do. So as far as it being a king of swords, she may be a queen of swords. So you two will resonate on the same frequency when it comes to how you express yourself, how you handle situations. Like you're quick to like just tell people what it is. You'll tell people no if it, if you say if you mean no, yes if you mean yes, things like that. Like you're very like. I don't give a ass kind of energy. I don't care what you think about me. This is what I want. That's what I'm going to get. There's something like that. It's not being a narcissist. It's just that you two have a way to buy yourself. You don't got time for the BS. You don't got time to be playing around with people. Like I said, that's what I want. That's what I get. If that's what I work for, that's what I'm getting. Okay. Uh, like, I didn't mince, like you two don't mince your words. I think that's what it is I'm trying to say. But you two are more similar than you think. And I think you're a little harder on yourself. But again, this woman would have picked up on all of this when she met you. So I don't know why you, you, you're you out here wasting your money on a practice. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh at you, sir. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't know what kind of havoc you've been causing in your own life, in somebody's life. But you got a lot of work to do when you come towards that point of wands that you want to. Because I, I think it is so it is so interesting because you are coming up as a king of swords, king of wands. And this woman is coming up as a queen of swords, queen of wands. So you two are like a perfect match. But there's something about you being stuck in your mental about coming to this woman and her rejecting you. So I don't know what it is you did behind the scenes. Or it may be some type of lifestyle you're in. Maybe you're in the public eye. Maybe you're a bit of a party person, a party goer. You like to be on the scenes. And maybe this woman likes to be inside. Uh, I don't know what it is. But you two will have to find some type of me uh, uh, medium. Um, where it's like maybe she go out, goes out with you sometimes. And sometimes you stay home. Or you two will figure it out. But whatever it is you've been... like just beating yourself down about i don't think this sister gives to crap like you two will work something out if you need to quit drinking if you need to quit smoking if you need to quit something maybe she'll maybe she'll put in the effort to work with you so you two can figure that out but i don't think this is something that like, you need to be hurting your head about it's like if i go in she's not going to want to talk to me she's going to curse me out if she finds out what i did and i think this is what people have been trying to play on your mind you see this right here you two will meet have some type of healing situation um, and, you know, maybe come together and balance things out. You two are meant to be very abundant. Um, but I don't know if people have been playing on your mental, like, oh my gosh, if you go to her, she's going to find out what you did and she's going to cut you off and she's going to be real rude and disrespectful to you. That's not even characteristic of a high priestess. They don't be rude to you. I mean, they are straightforward and direct, but they're not saying things to you to be malicious. They're just saying it to you because that's what it is they have to say. It's the truth, and it is the truth. Um, but get out of your mind. <laughs> get out of your mind about whatever this union is. Union is. Everything is being exposed to you. You're wasting your time going to a practitioner. That practitioner don't be paid. She got paid or he got paid <laughs> to, to give you a false message. Someone should have told you a long time ago, hey, that's your twin flame right there. <laughs> that's your soulmate right there. That you're doing love spells on. You sure you want me to keep going? Maybe they told you and maybe you didn't care. I don't know, but you may want to stop going to get those. <laughs> I'm so sorry, sorry. I'm trying to take this serious. <laughs> get yourself together, Cynthia. <laughs> Uh, whoo, get yourself together, Cynthia. Get, get yourself together. Okay, okay. <laughs> who anyway, anyway, to get <laughs> oh, It's not gonna work. I'm telling you, it's not gonna work. These love spells, it ain't gonna work. You're wasting your time. Because, one, think about it this way. <sighs> If this woman didn't have any emotions for you and you're doing love spells, it's not. It's just going to make the lack of emotions even worse. Like, she's going to even get to a point where she starts disliking you for some reason. Before, she maybe just didn't have emotions for you, but now she's she'll start, like, disliking you. Like, physically not wanting to be around you, not wanting to talk to you. That's what love spells do to people that don't have, like, emotions for you. 
okay? Um, on the other hand, and if she already has emotions for you or you two already have a contract, like this situation, it's not really going to change anything. It's just you two will come together when you're supposed to be, but you're not going to send love spell to this woman and then she's going to wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I got to go find my twin flame. I got to go find my twin flame. He's calling me. He's calling me. It's it's nothing like that. Like, a sis is going to roll over in bed and go to sleep and be like, I don't know what the heck that is, but I don't got time for your nonsense today. Leave me be. Leave me be. It's, it, it's, it's not doing what it, it's not doing what you think it is. Like, I don't know who's doing the love spell with you, but they need to be one-on-one -on -one with you and just tell you directly, hey, you need to go talk to your twin flea and cut this nonsense out. But there's something, maybe you're paying her real good. So she, uh, she, she's like, shoot, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> she's going to keep going. So I'm telling you, there's something this woman is not telling you. You may want to be careful. Like these people are doing rituals behind the scenes to end some type of union from coming together or block some type of union from coming together. You need to stand your ground and call judgment in this situation and balance it out. You know exactly what is going on. You know you're going out to have some type of new beginning. You may be someone that's in the public eye or whoever you're watching could be in the public eye and they're trying to stop that person so and stop you two from coming together. I don't know what this is, but sir, there's going to be some type of need of forgiveness in the situation. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let Hopefully that, that high priestess you're going to can tell you the truth. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your money. Don't do it, sir. I'm not going to make this too long. I'm about to be out of here. But you, you, yeah, you're wasting your time. Yeah, stop paying that woman your money. <laughs> Get out and go take care of business yourself. Like, go talk to the high priestess that you're interested in. Your high priestess is a high priestess. You two are dangerous, I guess. <laughs> very gifted people. That your mind, you're very gifted. But I think you've been second guessing yourself your whole life, which I don't get. That's something we all do when we're when we're younger. But as you get older, come on, sir. That's why your 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 gift is not like you're not as alert as you should be. Like you're more gifted than the people you're going to to help you. Can you imagine that <laughs> madness? Madness. Wonders. Wonders. <laughs> Make us see wonders. Uh, okay, so you're planning on going towards someone, um, maybe to what? What are you going to go do, sir? You're going to go confess to them? You don't want someone to be what? I don't know what this is. You got me confused. Um, but the reason people are afraid of you going towards a woman is that someone else is going to be losing their finances. They're going to have to go in hiding. They're going to be out here real pissed off, broke, and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what it is you all have been up to behind the scenes, but I'm about sick and tired of you all's energy. It is driving me nuts. You all are out here in some type of collaboration. You don't want someone receiving what it is that's theirs. Maybe they don't want you and someone coming together. There's some type of business that's on the line. There ain't no money. From what I'm seeing, the money is gone. Uh, there's a woman that's falling from grace. Someone is about to be homeless. I don't know what this is. I don't got, you don't got nothing to do with me. I'm tired of you people. <laughs> I'm so tired. This is why I'm teaching up my platform. <laughs> because of you people. I'm so sick of you people. I'm so sick of you. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired. I'm sick of you people. Listen, I am so sick of your nonsense. Oh, I'm sick of you people's nonsense. But it's a woman in a community that's falling from grace, losing her independence. Miss Miss Lady Man cannot be out here anymore talking about she's bougie. Are we we anymore? She's gonna have to live in her truth. Uh ain't no more munting. Folks, there's no more munting. Other munting is gone. Uh she's being left out in the cold, wherever this is. Someone don't got no munting. I don't know if she's been misusing her money to pay to block other people, steal from other people, but baby, you're losing everything. The ancestors are balancing this situation out. Golly. Dang. Ooh. Gonna have to move on. All that uh girl, that's all the past. All that living in the living your best life. 
You say you don't got time to go back and forth with broke people. Well, you're a part of the club. Now, how you doing, sis? How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> you're going to have time to go back and forth with us now. <laughs> That's all you're about to have is time. You're about to have time for us. Don't be trying to hide or nothing. You're part of the club now. <laughs> the club of broke people. She said, I'm living my best life. <laughs> I ain't going back and forth with you broke people. <laughs> she said, oh, really? <laughs> Source. Source. Would you handle that, please? <laughs> Source handled it real quick. <laughs> I heard ignoring the signs, the symbols, the, 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 the communications from the spirit realm. They told you to stop doing something. You said, no, nah, I'm going to keep going. I know he's going to choose me. He's going to give me that offer. I know I'm going to get whatever this inheritance is. <laughs> that was a negative. He looked into that cup. He said, mm, nah, I'm going to go give it to a queen of cups. <laughs> Mm, nah, I don't want to be with you. Nope, 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 nope. Mm, this gift does not belong to you. You want me to what? Leave this person out in the cold? Not give them their money? You don't want me to balance this situation out? Why? Because you're jealous? Oh, 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 oh. Whoever this masculine is, I'm picking up on everyone. This man is petty. <laughs> That man is petty. I had never met a brother this petty before. He is petty. <laughs> he said, you said what now? You got me for <laughs> He said, she said, though, I'm telling you, it's going to come back to bite you in your butt if you go towards her. She's not who you think she is. She's not innocent. I'm telling you, you need to listen to me. I'm only trying to... You said, you said what now? <laughs> you got me fucked up. <laughs> I, I got it from here. <laughs> the brother don't got his big, sturdy behind out her face. <laughs> he said, chuck those deuces up. I'm good. <laughs> This is I'm picking up on, sir. You are petty as hell. You 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 sit there listening to those people, and you know you don't give two ass what it is they're saying. But you just be there listening, just listening. Uh huh, uh huh. I'm paying attention, but you ain't really paying attention because <laughs> you already made up your mind. I don't know if you communicated with someone and they didn't respond. They didn't get the communication. Someone is not ignoring you. People are blocking the communications, okay? <laughs> They're not ignoring you. People are interfering with communications, but you are petty. You're on a whole nother level of petty. And this is someone that'll even listen to what it is you're saying just so he can bring it back up <laughs> later. So, oh, oh, what was that you said again the other day? <laughs> didn't you, didn't you say you, uh, didn't you say that she, 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 she ain't real? Uh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. What I had meant was she's not, you know, really. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, that's not what you said. That's not what you said. <laughs> we need you to, to, to stick to the truth. Stick to the truth. Don't be out here trying to sneak away and get away with with, with no nonsense. You ain't pulling that over here. This man is petty. He is petty. He said, you want to argue? I got time for you. We're going to argue. <laughs> And the high priestess is saying, no, 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 no. She's not your true love. That's a lie. <laughs> Don't go. Here he goes. <laughs> Ooh, it's not true emotions. You don't really like her. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, folks, I'm done. I'm out. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Sir, I just wanted to come on here and clarify some things to you. <laughs> Stop doing spell work on your soul twin. Go talk to that woman. Okay. What is wrong with you? I had throwing money in the drain to a person that don't got paid to tell you lies. It says she's she's not who you think she is. I know it has the twin flame car out here, 
but that's someone else you're gonna meet. I think it's somebody you're already with. Ain't you with a high? Ain't you with a queen of pentacles? Whole time that queen of pentacles is a queen of pentacles in reverse, using you for money. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I am with a queen of pentacles. Yeah, is she, is she genuine? Yeah, she's genuine. No, she's not. Whole time she got a whole devil card next to her. Eight of swords next to her. Three of swords, and she's telling telling him she got a lot of emotions for you. That's why she's always stuck in her mind. So that because because she's wondering if you're gonna leave her, and she's gonna be heartbroken if you leave her. No, 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 no. That's a jealous, insecure woman that's trying to hold on to you for your money. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I feel like I should take this a little bit more serious than I am. But I know you didn't go out here doing love spells on your twin flame, sir. Ooh, you're going to go down in the history of spirituality in the spirit realm. Oh, Lord. Sorry, 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 sorry. I, um, I am, I am, I'm usually a very professional person, sir. This is, you know what? I can't. I can't. My ancestors say it's time to get out. I'll see you all later. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I'll see you in the next week. Goodbye for now.